Oh, who was that, my people? <laughs> it's your boy Chance Jollibet, aka Smooth, back with another video. So tonight, what we're we gonna be talking about? Power Book Two: Ghost, Season Three, Episode Five. No more second chances. Yo, this right here, this right here, this makes me makes me come to terms with like my grandmother and then why they loved why older people love the soap operas the soap operas <laughs> why they watch that every day and stuff like the most outlandish shit happens but they still tune in it's like this is not realistic at all it's something different every day but we still tune in why people watch the wrestling in <laughs> Yo, this is some shit that will never happen. That is unrealistic. It is entertaining as shit. So let's get into this episode, man. So Whitman was murdered in Korea. So that happened episodes ago. The people are in the Korea. They investigating and everything. Uh, she trying to get them out out of the house, like. Look, okay, so they they didn't got that. They they crossed their T's out of their eyes and everything. She had to get rid of the files and stuff like that, trying to keep them off her ass with Davis. Second chances, the class subject. So they talk about it, like second chance land of second chances and stuff. Like the settlers back in the days, they came on the, the Nina Pinta and the Santa Maria and all that. And Christopher Columbus and them, they were looking for better ways. But it wasn't a second chance for everybody. You built, you built America on the backs of slaves and indigenous people and stuff. Inequality, uh, redemption, oppression, like a, a lot of... A lot of different things America is based on. Like, everybody doesn't get redemption. Everybody doesn't get equality and stuff. Like, it's not the land of second chances for everybody. So, it was it was a nice little discussion, man. I, I, I like that on this episode. And my name is in the title. <laughs> Monet puts Tariq on the case. Where was international guap when Tariq got murdered? At this point, I'm like, who's international guap? I'm like, that's not Lorenzo. I'm like, International Guap. I'm like, Mecca? Who's International Guap is the person that they killed. So he was supposed to be the one that killed Zeke. But I'm trying to find out where he was. So if he wasn't where he was supposed to be whenever Zeke died, it's like, okay, if he got an alibi, he didn't kill Zeke. So I don't know how Tariq is supposed to find out this information. But he does, because he's just the most intelligent, the better version of Ghost. So, he always got the answers to everything. Mm. RSJ invites Tariq to Italy. So, they're talking with the Whitmans, not the Whitmans, the, uh, you know, Brain family and stuff. And they're like, oh, Tariq, he's an intern. Well, you can have the black token dude in the room for my meetings, but he can't go to Italy. He's the only one that speaks Italian. How did, well, I was about to say, how does he know that Tariq speaks Italian? But he's RSJ. He stays on top of his game. He, he, uh, does his due diligence and stuff. So, of course, he knows this information. It's hard for me to, to look at Homeboy at RSJ and be like, this is the richest black man in the world. Because he was on the deuce and he was, he was like a pimp or something. Like, I, that's that's how I, I look at him and I'd be like, man, that was that nigga on, on the deuce. <laughs> but anyways, IG, he didn't kill Zeke, an international guap. He didn't kill Zeke. Who did? We know who did. Braden dumbass, like they they getting ready to go to Italy and stuff. Like Tariq didn't to convince them. Like I, my girlfriend, she could come. Oh yeah, yeah, that's cool stuff, man. Yeah, let's go to Italy. Everybody is fly. They, they got the best dress cast on TV. Like, they be fly as hell. Like, everybody from, from Effie to Tariq to Brayden, Kane, even Lorenzo be having his, uh, 
his Fendi on and his Louis Vuitton. He got a Louis Vuitton cowboy looking jacket or something. Them. Everybody is, is super fly. But anyways, Brain Dumbass drops his phone. Like, nigga. And the thing about that is because, like, homegirl, the, the sister picks up the phone. She starts seeing all these, like, crypto deposits going to his phone. She gonna put two and two together, man. It's gonna be like... And she's seen that but when did she give his phone back? Did she not give him his phone? I didn't see her give him his phone back. And if if she wouldn't have, like, the phone is something that you automatically know about. So if they come back two episodes from now and homegirl still got his phone or something, I'd be like, come on, son. Come on, son. Kane tells, to, tells Lorenzo, look, I think Monet is getting on or something, man. You might have to come clean. Nigga. You better not. You better not. You you don't want to cross Monet right now? With what she's been going through and stuff? Yes, she's coming close. I come up with something else. Like, I was I was about to go on the scene. I was looking for Mecca and then I left. I heard gunshots, but I come up with some shit like that. Cause I wouldn't wouldn't tell Monet. Mm-mm. Drew still the horniest nigga on TV. Like, I say that. Nobody else has no sex scenes and stuff like that. Nobody else getting their grind on. Like, if every episode, Drew getting some dick. Like, I'm sorry I have to put it like that. But we got to call a spade a spade. We got to keep it real. This the horniest nigga in the world. Find out, they find out that the redneck was the CI. And he survived. So now they're going to have to clean up their mess about their little situation. We're going to see what happens with that. Monet clears her conscience. She talks to Evelyn and she's like, I I got to tell you. I got to tell you what happened to, what is his name, Fred or Frank? What happened to your husband? And yes, Lorenzo put a head out on him. She's trying to put a battery on homegirl back to kill Lorenzo. But she's like, I don't want to lose my boys. I don't want to have nothing to do with this and stuff. I think Monet knows that Lorenzo has something to do with it. And she's trying to get somebody to kill him. She's like, I don't want to kill him. That's my baby daddy and stuff like that. Like it's gonna, it's not going to be the easiest thing in the world for me to... And I just caught a body. So let me get somebody else to kill him. But it's not working out at this point in time. Uh, we go to Italy. So Rick, he finds out this company has patent issues. This company is like, oh, you better come with the cash. And 10% 10 10 of the holdings in cash and this and that. And they're like, uh, well, you know your company really ain't worth shit. Because you have patent issues. And if you can't get the patents, it's not even worth the gas that we took to get here. And I'm like, Oh, Tariq, man, he found out this information of this billion dollar company. No, it was Effie. Like, Effie is an important member of this clique. So, late on the episode, man, like, we, we got this Lauren information and stuff, man, but Effie is so integral to what they are doing. Even when Tariq finds out this Lauren business, can they lose Effie? Because Effie is so important. Like, Effie found out this information about this billion dollar company and stuff. And then she knows all Tariq and them business. The only way they can get rid of Effie is if they kill her. And then if they kill Effie, it's gonna be so, so obvious. Like, Tariq didn't kill the professor and just so many people close to him. It's, it'll be hard to cover up Effie murder. But that never stops power. Never, never. The hospital is crawling with ATF agents. Like they thought they were just gonna wash up in the in the hospital and kill a CI. No. But Tariq, they Tariq thought he gonna chill in Italy, man. Like we finally have a moment to ourselves, man. We could chill. We're gonna cook some dinner. Ah Nope. Noma comes and gives them a Grand Theft Auto mission. Like, this shit is like a video game. It's like a bad video game, man. Like, every time you think you can get a breather, <sighs> a horde of zombies come out. 
and you gotta fight to the to tooth and nail to survive. This is it's always just the most perilous circumstances in Power Universe. Like goddamn, like Tariq. I'm surprised he ain't had a, a, a he ain't had an aneurysm so far or something with all the shit that he got going on in his life, man. Like, God damn. And you still be able to do your homework and stuff. And you were tutoring Zeke and you running a drug company. God damn. Uh, Drew. Drew, one thing about going to the hospital was they did overhear some information that they, they had to see our phone. So they do get to see our phone. Thank God. Because Braden Pictures was on there. They had Braden Pictures, Lorenzo Pictures. They had all kind of incriminating information. If they didn't get that phone, it was a wrap. So that was a miracle that happened. Tariq, he needs RSJ to get into this party. And Noma's mission was for them to find out some that They got to find like a thumbnail or a drive or whatever in... That's what, what, what the mission is. But the only way to get in there is to convince RSJ to go. How are you going to convince that man to do anything? But he ends up getting it getting it done. So they go to this party, man. And we find out that RSJ has a similar storyline to Tariq. Because Tariq blames his father and stuff. And RSJ is like, my father was a number runner. He was a gangster and stuff. They didn't think I could do anything legit. But I pulled it off. I want you to do the same. So that could be a battery in Tariq back for later on in his life, if he can make it past all these trials and tribulations, to finally become the person that he means to be. But I, Braden is looking for this information. He gets caught, of course, but then Effie backdoors him. She gets the information. She gets the little drive or whatever. But Braden is he's done for at this point in the episode. We go to the Tahada household. Everybody has memories of good moments and stuff. They playing spades and they was in, in Acapulco or, or whatever. Everybody has good memories except for Diane. Diane is like, the only memories I have of Poppy is, is you was in jail visiting you. Look, they all around the same age. Like, Drew went to the college and took an art class. He's not that much older than Diane. Cain. Cain and, and Drew is close in age. How they have all these memories and stuff and Diane has no memories. They can't be nothing but two, three years older than Diane. Like, it don't make no sense. It don't make no sense. Just like the same thing they had with, with Zeke. Like, they had it like Zeke was so much different in age than them. Like, if it's around the same age. But they lied on his birth certificate. He still end up just being a little bit older. But it's like. Some things just don't be adding up. And stuff. One good thing about this episode. Lorenzo. He. At the dinner he's like. Diane I want you to stop selling drugs. I was I was trying to be a baseball player. And that wasn't in the cards. But I want you to be the first one. To graduate college and stuff like that. So he stops her drug dealing and stuff. He, he finally does some good father activity. Because he was like. No baby you gotta sell these drugs. I'm like nigga you father of the year. Braden. He's getting tortured. I'm like. Braden is keeping silent. I don't believe that. I think right when they punch Braden one time. It was Tariq. It was Noma. Oh. He would squeal like a pig, man. Braden would spill it all, man. But he's staying strong on this episode. They got to get him back. How they going to get him back? They have a little bit of uh, leverage. And that is the little thumb drive thing. But they got to give that to Noma. So how they going to use that? But they're going to have to come up with a plan, of course. Sax is snooping around. He finds out, he gets Davis out of the office and stuff. Davis, you would think he's slicker than that. He sees uh, Sax coming, so he puts the file away, and in front of uh, Sax, he hides the key underneath some papers. Sax walks out with him and then is like, oh, I'm not going to go meet your brother and try to help. I need to do some paperwork. So he backdoors and goes right in Davis' office and goes to the the stuff he hid right in front of Sax. 
and gets the paperwork. He finds out that Whitman, he has papers that from Whitman. He tries to call Jenny. Jenny is not answering. He's insecure as hell. He got to find out what's going on. So he's going to end up following Jenny. And we're going to see what happens with that situation. That This episode, yo, this is a good soap opera right here. This is Young and the Restless. Effie wants to, they they end up, to Rick uses no shit to, uh, to get Braden back. They end up getting Braden back and stuff, and they, they got snipers and stuff. They shooting and killing, and they like, you would think it would be a positive situation. Not necessarily, because Noma is like, y'all some good workers. I'm, I'm going to give y'all more work. It was so hard. We gave y'all a warehouse full of drugs and a bunch of guns, but you did such a good job. I'm going to give you more work. So that's how they are rewarded. Okay. Effie, she's talking to Tariq and she like, I found this information. I seen a, a picture with him and she has a, a daughter with the dude that she killed. We can use her as leverage. Bitches, you crazy? You gonna mess with Noma's child? You seen all the stuff that Noma did. Noma is the most heartless character you've seen in the power universe. The most dangerous, intimidating character. Like, you better leave Noma alone. Leave Noma alone. She is not, not to be played with at all. Lorenzo tells Monet he killed Zeke. I made, I made a big mistake. I made a big mistake. I thought it, I thought it was Mecca. You didn't trust me? Uh, what about my kids? And you brought him into this life and you didn't prepare him and this and that. You signed your death certificate, my brother. You you gotta get the hell out of my house. We're gonna separate, tell the kids we separated, but you gone. You don't love me. I don't love you. I hate you. Nigga, you fucked up. You know you fucked up, right? You know you fucked up. Boy, you... Cancel Christmas. Cancel Christmas is over. It's over. Why? Mm -mm. You should have died with. You should have went to to the grave with that lie. Mm -mm. Sax Sax needs a new inspection stick on his car. He got ten twenty two on this shit and stuff, man. Like Sax, yo, you you <laughs> like I noticed that stupid ass shit right there. But yeah, his inspection sticker is is out on his car. But anyways, he fo he follows Jimmy. To the CI. Yo, you gotta tell me what's happening. Yo, you you got me investigating and thinking that Tar I know Tariq didn't kill Lauren. He has been against Tariq this whole time, but he says this information at this point in time. Lauren comes outside. What the hell? You you oh my god, I'm done with you. I'm done with you. And she can't legally keep you here. So Lauren finds out. You was lying to me? Tariq didn't try to kill me? Oh no, you funky bitch. Um, uh, Tariq gets a text at night. In the middle of the night, meet me at the South Gate or whatever. I'm like, oh, Sax is gonna go talk to him. Sax is gonna tell him what happened. No. How the hell Lauren got away? She had guards and stuff at outside. How did she get all the way to the city and all that? But anyways, Lauren, Tariq finds out that Lauren is alive. Oh my God. Wow. But she's like, did you try to kill, get me killed? Yo, I care about you. I love you. What are you talking about? I can't, I can't trust anybody. I got to go talk to him. No, you can't let anybody know that I'm alive. So now what is Tariq going to do with this information? I'm in love with Effie. Effie. Effie is like, I got something I need to tell you. I love you too. But he's like, damn. I'm I'm building with this girl. She killed the love of my life. Yo, you killed her. I just lost the love of my life. <laughs> like his daddy when he, when he told that to uh to whatchamacallit. You know, I just lost the love of my life. Nigga, how you gonna say that to your wife? But anyways, yo. That is interesting. 
and Lorenzo gets murdered at the end of this episode by Drew's boyfriend. Monet must have slipped in, slipped the information to him. You know he killed your daddy, right? So now Drew, I gotta kill your daddy. And now when Drew find out, Drew is gonna kill his boyfriend, and you know what's gonna happen? Diane is gonna kill Monet. That's my prediction. Next episode, Monet is in charge, back in charge of the Tejada family. They blaming the Russians. They blaming the Russians on Lorenzo's death. That's not what happened. Tariq can't trust nobody. So he on the Stone Cold Steve Austin shit. Can't trust nobody. But it looked like he going to a subway and, and, and Noma's troops corner him. Yo, this is just what this is. This episode five, this is the middle of the season. And this is happening. Yo, five more episodes. Yo, what, they gonna have a nuclear bomb or something, man? How are they gonna raise the stakes? Yo, ghost gonna come back? <laughs> I, Tommy and it was gonna come back and, and Kanan is gonna come back? Like, how are they gonna keep raising the stakes? Like, wow. But yo, this was a great episode, man. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I'm, I'm starting to come to terms with, this just a big soap opera, man. Like, don't be taking everything so serious and shit. Like, crazy shit happens. It's power. But anyways, man, what y'all thought about this episode? Like, comment, subscribe. It'll be the greatest and the most hated. Uh, what did I miss? What did I name that you didn't notice? But anyways.